can be. Jordan. All right. Same deal. Uh, say your name and spell it. Uh, my name is Alex Generous, A-L-E-X-G-E-N-E-R-O-U-S, just like the word. Any letters after your name yet? Uh, not yet. I'm currently working on my PhD. Okay. And what was your abstract about? Uh, so my abstract was about uh, measles virus exploitation of transendocytosis. So that's quite a word jumble. Okay. Um, what was your finding? What was the significance? Uh, so my lab actually works with a lab in Chicago and a lab in New York. And we're all collaborating on a project um, where we found that uh, certain cells can exchange material between them. You can think of it as if there's two rooms abutting each other and sometimes the door opens and lets a little bit of air through. Uh, but our lab was particularly interested because one of those types of cells can be infected by measles virus. So we found, and what I'm working on, is that measles will get into that first room and then can sort of move in when that door opens a little bit into a cell that it's not supposed to be able to infect. Um, and this has repercussions in that if you think of your immune system like staff security in a hotel, they can walk through the hallways and they have cameras in the hallways, but if there's that staff door, you know, that's sometimes between adjoining rooms, it's almost like measles is waiting for a staffer to open the door and go through, and then it slips through behind and isn't seen by the immune system, the security guards walking through the hallway. So what's the downstream possibility of that? What so uh, measles virus, which you may not know, is the most transmissible virus in the world. And uh, it's been an open question as why. And one of the reasons is that it essentially gets into your body and out again without activating your immune system. And once it gets out, then eventually you will have antibodies and you will have your immune system activated. But the initial replication cycle and getting into somebody else is so quick that your immune system doesn't have time to respond because it doesn't see it for a while. So it's stealthy and sneaky. Yeah. How can that be applied to disease? Is is this just about how better to cure measles? Uh, so part of it is it's another uh, piece of evidence that shows that people should get vaccinated for measles virus, which I realize may be a contentious statement for some people, but uh, it shows uh, the power of vaccination, whereas if you are vaccinated, the virus isn't as able to hide in your body. Uh, and so you don't get the disease phenotype um, the disease uh, where you get the rashes and you can have your immune system depressed for months and then many people get sick of secondary infection of some kind at that point. So they might get a cold and get very sick from that or even get uh, killed by some disease because their immune system is depressed by measles. Okay, that gives me the measles 101 lecture <laughs> on why you should get a shot, but does the mechanism you discovered have any impact on anything else? So uh, it may explain why um, in some cases we can use um, measles virus in what's called oncolytic virotherapy. So that's another big word jumble. But using a virus that will uh, naturally attack a cancer cell. So this has been shown in uh, measles virus, it was found by accident there was a child who had a tumor in his eye and then he got a measles infection and lost the tumor. And uh, since that case, we've been trying to develop a safe way to use measles virus to uh, work as part of a cancer therapy. And this mechanism may explain why measles is able to spread through the outside layer of a tumor so quickly and so effectively. And if we truly understand this movement, we may be able to optimize that to make um, the measles virus better at killing tumor cells. Okay, we'll stop there. <laughs>